Welcome to ATC CAD. I'm David Atkins. Last week we took a look at adding SVG logos to our Fusion 360 designs. But what if we want to remix a model that we found online as an STL or 3MF? This takes a few extra steps that we will cover in today's episode. At its heart, Fusion 360 is a solid modeling program. This means that all the 3D objects have volume, and that volume can be added or removed by combining or subtracting more simple shapes. An STL uses a different method, mesh modeling. The mesh defines the surface of the 3D model using a whole bunch of 2D faces. These models don't have volume and can't be edited using these solid editing tools. Yes, Fusion 360 can edit mesh models. If you have experience with mesh modeling tools like Blender or 3ds Max, then you probably wonder what problem I'm even talking about. But since the majority of Fusion 360 users are going to have the most experience with solid modeling techniques, the first thing we need to do is convert the mesh into a solid. A while ago, I finally decided to do something about my filament collection. It was scattered all over the place and had become a huge mess. After looking around, I decided to build a wall rack based on the rep rack design. It seemed easy enough. Print the brackets, cut some conduit, and put it on the wall. The problem was, I'm an idiot. When I went to the hardware store to buy the conduit, I didn't realize they were out of regular conduit and only had heavy wall conduit. I bought it, cut it up, and painted them long before I realized that the outer diameter was too big for the bracket design I had downloaded. So I needed to change the design. I started up Fusion 360 and tried using the open command to load the 3MF file. 3MF files work really well with Fusion because they contain extra metadata that STLs are missing. Generally speaking, they just work. That said, using the open command loads the body as a part. You can easily work on that part, but it requires a few extra steps that I don't want to deal with. So instead of simply using open, I'm going to start a blank project and use the insert mesh command. This loads the same thing, but doesn't place it inside a part. If I expanded the imported part object in the model browser, I can then expand the bodies folder and see by the icon that I'm dealing with a mesh object. This is a pretty well modeled mesh part. There aren't a ton of faces in the design and there are no holes in the mesh. We can check this by going to the mesh tab in the ribbon and running the repair command. The green checkbox means that everything is probably fine. You can check the detailed analysis to confirm this. If I right-click on the mesh body and choose Properties and then expand the mesh section, I can get details on how many faces and vertexes there are. It seems like a lot, but it's under 100,000, which isn't that bad, so I'm not going to worry about it. So now I can go to the Modify panel and choose Convert Mesh. Using the default options and ignoring the warning, I can click OK. If everything went well, then the icon of the body has changed to a solid. Now I can edit the body like normal. Going back to the solid tab, I'll begin a new sketch. I've already measured the OD of the conduit, so I'll draw a circle and set the size of that circle to just be a tiny bit bigger than the OD of the conduit. Because this is a converted mesh, I can't snap to a center like I normally might, but zooming in and eyeballing it to center should work well enough. I'll draw another circle at the spot that I need one and set it to the same diameter. You can click on the other circle's dimension to simply copy that value if you want to be lazy. I can now finish my sketch and start the extrude command. Pulling it through the bracket, this will cut the volume out that I want to remove. This leaves a sharp edge that I'd like to round over to match the rest of the part. I'd prefer a chamfer, but I also don't want to redo the entire design. 
An easy way to do this is to select the inner face of the hole and then find a radius that will work. This inner hole will also be filleted, which limits the size we can use, but it's still easier than selecting all the edges around the hole. I found a 0.5 to be a radius that worked fine. And that's it. I can right-click on the top of my model browser and choose Save to Mesh. Export it to my preferred format, and I'm ready to print. Here's my finished shelf. It looks great. I uploaded the heavy wall conduit model to printables and you can find it there. I also made a collection of all the other prints I used for this shelf system and you can find a link to it in the description. Here I've got a switch controller dock that I downloaded from Thingiverse. This was remixed by Manitim Lab to work with switch pro controllers. He did a great job, but I want to add a logo to it. Opening up an STL directly can cause a problem. Here you can see I've opened up the STL file. It looks okay, but if I measure it, you can see that the size is wildly wrong. If I insert the mesh into the same model, it comes in at the right size. Always check your sizes, guys. Don't be like me. Forget to do so and only notice when you start to print the stupid thing. When I insert it, it comes in at an orientation that I find difficult to work with. So I use the rotate gizmo to rotate it so the bottom is actually on the bottom. Next, looking at the model browser, I notice there's a warning icon. There are several issues with this model that Fusion isn't happy about at all. It says there isn't positive volume, which means there are holes in the mesh. This isn't too difficult to fix. To fix the error with the holes, I need to use the repair tool. This is found in the mesh tab in the ribbon. Clicking on the body, you will see the warning message. You can also click Detail Analysis and see there are other issues as well. I'm going to use the Rebuild option using the Accurate method. I want to check the preview box so I can see what I should get. I'm going to leave the density value alone here. Even though we have way too many triangles right now, we can fix that later. I should see that the warning goes away and the Detail Analysis has also removed the errors. We could try and convert this to a solid now, but this model is way too detailed. Looking at the body properties, I can see it has more than 200,000 faces. Converting this into a solid as it is will take forever. So the next step is to simplify the model. Using the reduce command, check the preview box and play around with the options. I can see that using the proportion option and the adaptive method will maintain the shape well. Playing with the slider will show me what value will give me a reasonable triangle count. For here, I'll choose 5. Great! We now have a simplified mesh that doesn't give us any warnings. If you do have warnings, you can check the repair tool and see if you have any new errors introduced by the reduce command. If so, you may need to run that sequence of repair and reduce a few times to get everything happy. We don't have any warnings, so we can go to the next step. Using the Convert Mesh tool, I can select the body. I'll use the default values here and click OK. Be sure to check the Bodies folder in the model browser. The icon should be white, indicating a solid body. If you get any other color, you may need to go back a step. Now we can finally get to our logo. I need to start with the Offset Plane command. I'm going to use one of the origin planes to start with and drag the arrow until my plane is past the face I want to engrave on. My plan here is to engrave the logo, not emboss it, so I can be a bit lazy on my offset plane's position. If I was planning on embossing it, I'd need to be more careful of where I place the plane. I can then use this plane to import my SVG. Seeing this with all the edges visible can be difficult. You may find it nice to go to the display settings and change your display to shaded. Since I have a bunch of triangular faces here, not a nice smooth one, I can't use the emboss tool. That's okay, I can definitely use extrude like we have in earlier sections. It may look a little messy right now, but that's okay. I'll export this one as an STL since I'm not going to use multicolor printing for this and open it in my slicer. This model is pretty small, and when we import it and slice it, we can see it does look good since our printer doesn't have the resolution to make all those triangles. Here's the original, 
after being sliced, and I think you'll agree the shape is pretty much identical. Maybe if I was printing with a 0.2 millimeter nozzle, you'd see a difference. And here's the final print. I think it came out well and definitely looks better than my old Switch controller stand. Leave a comment and let me know what you think. Now all I need to do is remix this to make the same stand for all my other controllers. That'll be a fun project. I've uploaded this remix to Thingiverse and Printables. Links can be found below if you want to print it yourself, or, you know, you can do it yourself and get some practice. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please leave a thumbs up. The next episode in this mini-series will cover how to convert raster graphics into SVGs using free tools. If that sounds good to you, maybe hit subscribe so you don't miss it. You can even hit the bell icon if you don't get enough pop-ups on your phone yet. If you're interested in learning Fusion 360, look into our live Fusion 360 training classes, or any of the other CAD platforms that we teach. Learn in three days what takes your school a whole semester to cover. You can find out more at atkinstechconsulting.com. If you're seriously into 3D printing, you might like to check out the printing and filament log books that I designed. Links are in the normal place. As always, I'm David, and happy CADing.